right guys, this is gonna be just a real quick video to go over the install of the A-pillar gauges. And then I'll also go over installing these mirrors. That was a real quick, simple job. Uh, really upgraded the look of this truck. All right, so real fast before we dive into the the uh, a pillar gauge install video and these and these mirrors, I've had a few questions about being able to reach the uh, climate control, the AC heater controls, uh, with this screen in the way. And I've always said, yeah, it's not a problem reaching them; you just can't see them. So here's kind of a view for my angle. Like I would say, I can't see the controls, but they are very very easy to reach. Um, you can't see them, but they're right. I mean, they're just just below the bottom edge of this thing, um, and there's plenty of space. If I can get my finger out of the way, there's plenty of space to reach back there, so it's not an issue at all. Um, but the thing is, like when you're driving, you can't obviously bend down like this to see. Or you're not going to want to. So it's pretty easy. I mean, the first one is your fan speeds. So you can control that. The middle one is the temperature. So you know the left is cold, right's hot. So you don't need to see that. The only one you kind of need to memorize is this one. Um, so I just know, obviously I want AC. I go from the center, I go two clicks left. If I want heat, one click right or two clicks right for you know your feet. And then the next one does the defrost. So it takes some getting used to, I guess, but it's I've never seen it. It's never been a problem for me at all. Some people may not like it. Some people may not want to deal with that. But for me, I'd much rather have this big, nice head unit, um, and then just reach behind there to grab that. So I just wanted to touch. I just wanted to uh, talk to that since I've seen multiple comments about that. All right, let's get on to this. Uh, these gauge installs now. All right, guys. Just wanted to get you a, a peek behind the curtain before I start cleaning all this wiring up. Um, we've got the exhaust gas temperature gauge the boost gauge and the transmission temperature gauge the boost gauge is a little bit longer so i was having a little bit of clearance issues with the the uh the pressure tubing there hitting and so i'm just going to try it out before i put the uh, little thing on it to hold it but that's how they're gonna that's how they're gonna sit there um now i just gotta clean up this wiring all right, guys, I had to figure out how to hold this so you guys can see everything. Obviously, this is your EGT probe. The white is a it's a 12-volt power source for the lighting. So this white, this red, which is the 12-volt power source. These are my wires, obviously. 12-volt power source for the lighting. And then this red wire right here. 12, all of these are the 12 volt power sources for the lighting. So all three of these can be combined into one into a connector. And then the same thing with the grounds. We have a ground here. We have this ground, sorry, this ground for the boost gauge. And then we have this ground for the transmission temperature gauge, along with the ground or that's for the lighting and then along with the ground for the sending unit so all these grounds can be connected together into one plug and then the last two things is a 12 volt ignition source for both the egt gauge and the transmission temperature gauge so that's going to be another plug to go to a 12 volt ignition source and then lastly, this wire, I know all I have is red and white, so it gets confusing, but this wire just goes to the sender on the transmission. So we're gonna have, out of all these wires, they'll come into a single plug, and then it'll only be four wires come out. It'll be a ground, a 12 volt ignition source, a 12 volt lighting source, and the sending unit plug will be the only thing that's coming out of that plug 
but then you'll have the tube for the boost gauge and the EGT. So all this mess will turn into four wires with these two. So we'll start cleaning this stuff up. So here's the issue I'm having with the boost gauge. In reading online, it looks like a lot of people have this issue. The problem is, like I said before, there's a clearance issue. Come on, focus. See if I can get it to focus with the uh, the IPT or MPT fitting, it hits the back of the pod, so it doesn't allow the gauge to sit all the way down. So it'll be a lot easier to show it this way. So I even tried kind of grinding that bolt just a little bit to give it some clearance. It just wasn't enough. So quick run to the old auto parts store. We got a 45, so should be able to thread that on there and give me some clearance. We'll give it a shot. All right, so as you can see, that, that 45 gave just enough clearance. So, so now it's sitting in there properly. It doesn't have that gap. Of course, now it looks like it does, but it's sitting in there much better than it was. And then also, I got all the wiring cleaned up, like I said. So everything's coming into this single four-pin plug, and I've got a, the other four-pin is in the truck. All right, guys, and for the boost gauge, I got this T and these two eighth inch MPT quarter inch hose adapters just from the local auto parts store. They give you this, so this way I can just tap into the uh, map sensor line to uh, get my boost pressure from my gauge rather than drilling and tapping the intake. All right, so here's the other end. I've got the ground. I've got a... 12 volt ignition source. I got the 12 volts for the the uh, lights, and I've got a uh, the uh, transmission sender. So this wire runs to the firewall. It's already underneath the truck. These two red wires and the black wire run right down here to the fuse box. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but this one is to the ignition. This is another of a short one at a circuit. So I got to do it at a circuit. That's for the instrument lights and then the ground i ran right there underneath the dash and then obviously the boost tubes have to go to the firewall and then the egt probe has to go to the firewall so all i got to do is plug this guy in and snap these things up so then coming out of the firewall down there we've got the, the boost tube the the uh thermocouple and the sending units the white wire so the boost tube I have running over the top here and then I made that T and then just tapped it right into the map sensor line so right to the map sensor right here so that's how I'm getting the boost pressure reading and then underneath the truck let's see there's a thermal couple so that's where that runs down to and it's plugged in right there and then the sending unit for the transmission comes around and then right there to the transmission all right so i got the wiring cleaned up here um so i just did an add a circuit right here um i believe it's fuse 45 it's the ignition switch 12 volt power source so the add a circuit right there and then, so that's for the power for the gauges. For the lights, I did a, a wire tap right here. It's the second wire in on the top row of this connector here. I believe it's like yellow with a green stripe or something, but it's the second one on top. So I did a wire tap there and then that allows the, for the dimming function of the lights at night. And then I showed this already, but then the ground for everything is just right there under the dash. This black wire right here. Actually, no, it's this black wire right here. So that's the ground for all the gauges. All the gauges are working like a champ. It's finally time to go ahead and bolt on these new mirrors.
All right, hopefully you can hear me with the wind, but it came out really dang nice. Here, let's hit this blinker. So yeah, the only thing, there's a little gap right up here. I don't know if it's that noticeable. I may want to trim some of the, there's a foam backing to it. I may want to trim some of that foam to make it sit a little, a little more flush. But other than that, the rest of it looks really good. Um, I just kind of tightened the bolts one at a time and kind of worked its way into position to get it to tighten down and, and sit correctly. Um, but I may do something about that. But overall, quick, easy project. Maybe took half an hour at most. All right, guys, this build is definitely picking up some steam now that we got this engine in and all broken in. Um, if you haven't seen the other videos, if you're new to this channel, check out the other videos. We go over the removal and installing of this new 600 horsepower Kill Devil diesel engine. Um, so check that out. So this build is, is starting to pick up some steam here. Um, some updates about the full wheel drive not working. So I did change these relays, the full wheel drive electronic shift on the fly relays, hoping the simple solution was it. That didn't solve it. I pulled the motor off the transfer case cycled the uh, selector the motor's not turning so either and of course i don't have my voltmeter here so i can't tell if it's getting power or not but there's either a motor issue or a power issue or a switch issue somewhere so still no full wheel drive but we're going to get that figured out so we can actually do some boosted full wheel drive launches and get this thing accelerating but in other news i have actually moved all of my front end conversion parts up to my weekday bachelor pad because man i'm trying, trying to work on the truck on the weekends you know with the honeydew list and everything else it's just it's tough so with it up here i can work on it after work things like that but it's going to be in this tiny little one car garage but man i tell you what this servini hood i unboxed it to move it up here this is the servini cal induction hood for an 11 to 16 Woo! gentle looks fantastic um, and obviously I've got the bumpers, headlights. Um, this is like the wiper transmission, the, the grill support brackets, obviously the grill. So we've got everything here that we need to get this thing finally moving. Um, and the other thing, the last thing before we sign off here, the rear end. If you guys can give me suggestions on what you think is the best as far as putting a locker in the rear end of this thing, because the... I gotta get the power down to all four wheels with this thing because it's just, it's so easy just to roll the 35s um, with just one wheel in the back spinning. So give me some ideas on what y'all think the best locker should be. Um, that would be fantastic. But in the meantime, guys, the next video should be tearing apart the front end of this truck and getting this front end conversion going.